what was the second problem? Yes, you're right. Uh, that RTT, RTT spread too wide. Uh, too wide. This means what? This means RTT is not uh, considering um, uh, variation, uh, variance into concentration, deviation into concentration, right? Because um, because RTT uh, estimate. is computed uh, by this is so because RTT estimated is computed using estimate uh, exponentially weighted moving average. Okay, if you remember here, we've calculated it. Yeah, so this is based on exponentially weighted moving average. Okay, so that's why it only it only considers. Yes, you're right. It only considers the mean and here is the problem, right? What is the problem? The problem is that it doesn't it, it doesn't or it take uh, variance into consideration. Variance into account. OK. OK, so um, so clearly. We have seen this in this example. So the RTT is based on uh, two times the estimated RTU is based on two times the uh, estimated round trip time. Uh, this is the mean, this is the uh, RTU, and this means all the packets having RTT uh, more than this RTU will be retransmitted. Why? Because uh, it's not taking into consideration the variance. And the solution uh, is. Uh, Jacobson's algorithm. Solution is proposed by Ben Jacobson. So, Jacobson's algorithm. What it says? It says, uh, it says estimate deviation of sample RTT. So, so we have to estimate deviation, variance, we have to estimate deviation to D of sample uh, RTT. So sample RTT will be calculated in the same way that we have uh, done earlier, right? So there's no change in calculating sample RTT. But now, in order to control its spread, uh, the RTT spread, we need to estimate its deviation, right? And this can be calculated uh, this can be it's very easy. This the, the deviation say is represented by this uh, d nu is always uh, beta into uh, d volt. Plus one minus beta into sample RTT minus estimated RTT. So first remember, there's no change in the calculation mechanism of sample RTT, it's the same, right? Uh, that we have covered earlier. Let me show you, it to you again. So the sample RTT will be calculated exactly in the same way, okay? But in order to uh, control the, or calculate or estimate the deviation, so we'll uh, calculate uh, deviation nu um, by using this formula. D nu is equal to D uh, uh, beta into D old plus one minus beta into the sample RTT minus the estimated RTT that we have calculated in the previous step. And uh, 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 you know the the value of uh, this you know beta is 0.25. Okay, right. So this will give me what? This will give me deviation of sample RTT. And now uh, I will take the deviation uh, into consideration to calculate uh, the 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 RTO retransmission timeout. 
So, so we have to take the deviation um, in sample RTT, that is D into count. Then we have to compute. And computing the transmission timeout. So uh, the finally the retransmission timeout is equal to estimated uh, RTT. And remember, uh, say it again. Remember um, uh, this simple estimate. This simple, you know. I remember this estimated RTT. Uh, is calculated as usual, right? Plus four times the deviation. Okay, so this is how we calculate the retransmission timeout. Now, this retransmission timeout takes into consideration not only uh, the varying RTT by calculating this estimated RTT, but it also uh, takes into consideration the deviation by calculating uh, this. Uh, deviation in sample RTT into consideration uh, using this formula, right? So this is how retransmission timeout is calculated. So the, let's go back to the slide set. So let's talk. Uh, so we were talking about the first timer, which is the retransmission timeout. This retransmission timeout is known as uh, retransmission timeout RTO, and um, uh, this RTO is calculated uh, based on uh, RTT. And the problem here is uh, that RTT is uh, variable, so we have to calculate estimated RTT, or you can call it RTT smooth. And this is alpha into RTT plus the current value of uh, RTT smooth uh, plus one minus alpha into RTT uh, measured or sample RTT. Right, and here the value of alpha is uh, uh, point one to five. Okay, and uh, usually when we calculate RTT. Uh, RTO retransmission timeout, so we multiply it with the um, uh, multiply the smooth. Whenever we have to calculate this RTO, uh, so we multiply two with this smooth RTT or estimated RTT. Right. So we have covered this in detail that if we have to go, uh, you know take into consideration the variance, we have to uh, look at this um, uh, the new formula for the calculation of retransmission timeout. Okay. Uh, the next timer that uh, TCP makes use of is called persistent persistence timer, and this timer we have already covered in the previous lecture because this timer uh, is used uh, uh, by the sender to send a probe message um, to the uh, receiver machine to see if there's enough space available in the uh, receiver. Buffer. Remember, uh, in order to uh, deal with the silly window syndrome. Uh, we use this mechanism where uh, we want a sender to advertise a zero window size, a receiver to advertise a zero window size. This means sender will stop sending and wait for the acknowledgement, but this can obviously result into uh, some sort of um, uh, deadlock where the sender waits for acknowledgement and the receiver is waiting for the data. So in order to resolve this deadlock, remember, uh, we used uh, a persistence uh, timer where after 60 seconds, the sender will send approved message uh, uh, to the uh, receiver to advertise its receive window size. Okay. So uh, the next timer that is used by uh, TCP is known as keep live timer. The keep live timer is used to prevent TCP connections to uh, exist forever. So there's a there's, there, there may be a case where a client connects to a server, transmits some data, and then crashes. But on the server side, the connection is still there. The All the buffers and the variables are being maintained by the server. So normally, server gets a keep live timeout after two, two hours. So after keep live timeout, server probes the client. And if client is not there or has crashed, there's no response from the client, the connection is uh, terminated. And then the last timer is called time-weighted timer. This time-weighted timer is used to 
uh, terminate a connection. As right? so whenever we have to terminate a connection, so TCP sends our connection close request. Uh, the connection is held in a limbo uh, for time weighted period allowing the duplicate fin uh, segment to arrive at the server side. Right? The value of the timer is usually twice the expected lifetime of a segment. So upon receiving the duplicate fin, uh, which is uh, for, for, and for, for this duplicate fin, we wait for time weighted uh, timer. 